Let's go and try the two remaining questions. So if you haven't tried it out, pause the video and try it yourself first. A few moments later. Okay, so the first question told you there is a wind turbine and there's a diameter of 25 meter, which is shown on the diagram. And then the next thing is the velocity or speed you may call of the wind. And then this is the mass of the air that going in in each second. And as you calculate the kinetic energy when it's traveling at this speed, well, that's the same one passing through in one second. So I guess, uh, again, intuitively, the first thing you do is you write down the equation for the one that they are asking, which is kinetic energy. So you can say Ke equals to half mv square. And yeah, basically, that is what you need to do because you got m, you got v from the question. So 7,500 and v is 12 square. So the answer should be 540000 joule. If you really want to show uh, in another unit, you can use k joule. As you know, k is kilo, and so that takes three zero, one thousand. So 540 k joule if you really want to. But yeah, just show the whole number. I think that's fine as well. Next part is set. Uh, the turbine only convert 10% of the kg into electrical. So that means this is the efficiency of the turbine. So as you calculate the electrical power output of the turbine, stay in the equation that you use. So, well, even if they don't, you should always state the equation. So first of all, we will state the efficiency. So you don't have to think about, oh, how to rearrange the equation that we learned. Because the equation that we learned is efficiency equals to useful over total times 100 percent all right it could be useful work done useful energy over the uh, or useful power over the total respective things so total uh, input output or total power so the main idea is useful over total so here since the question asks us the power then obviously we will be saying total uh, power and then useful power here. So useful power then of course must be output. There's no such thing called useful power input. It must be output that is useful. As for total power, then uh, we can say total power input, right, more intuitively. And so here, uh, useful power output is the one that you don't know. Okay, so uh, we can keep that. Or you can use uh, a symbol P to represent it if you don't want to copy it again like me. And then the total power output is something that you actually obtain earlier because this is a kinetic energy you have in one second. right? And if you recall the idea of power, power is energy over time. And so uh, if you really want to, you can also state that in this question and say that and therefore power and useful power more precisely would be the one that you find. So five four zero 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 watts. Right? Four zero, yes, that's correct. Okay, and so here you have this copy. And then the efficiency will be ten percent. Okay, and so by calculation, or if you just look at this directly, I think you all can mentally calculate um, the output is going to be 10 times less, simply. So 54000, zero, 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 simply. Now, it said on the other day, the wind speed is half than that in A. So uh, obviously, that means V equals to 12 divided by 2 equals to 6 meters per second. So this is something that you can write. It's totally fine if you're afraid, oh, would that be marked or not? It doesn't really matter. You can just leave it like this. And then as you calculate the mass that's passing through the circular area, that means the turbine itself per second. So for this question, you need to have a bit of knowledge in geometry uh, and also uh, visualization. So the air actually got drawn in into a wind turbine 
is in the shape of a cylinder right imagine these are the air that it goes in all right this is a cylinder and so this whole volume will contain the air that got in in one second and so let's say in one second previously it was 12 meter per second so the length here is going to be 12 meter because that how much they travel in one second and so now if the wind speed got half that means six only then the new volume is going to be half as well so six meter and therefore if you look at uh, i think it's very easy to tell the volume is half right now so right now uh, here you can simply say uh, the new mass is going to be divided by two so it was seven thousand five hundred now you divide by two. So it should be 3750 kg. I'll use a calculator anyway. Okay, last part of the question. This part might be quite challenging and you will find it's quite complicated. So it's very important that you write down the equation and do it step by step. Don't try to do it at once. So follow me here if you cannot do it. So they are asking you the fraction, right? Okay, so let's say fraction all right we can take it slow the fraction of what the fraction of of course you have to draw the fraction line first of the second day as a fraction of the first day so second day uh sorry more precisely power of the second day power output of the second day so how about i say power output two and power output one in this case and so we can further deduce this one because uh, power output is something to do with the power input, right? So if you like to, you can say uh, that is 10% of the power input, input one, and then the, oh, sorry, not one, two here. And then same, same for the one at the bottom will also be 10% of the power input for the first day and in fact you know it's actually doesn't really matter that what efficiency is because it's going to be cancelled anyway as long as you are talking about the same wind turbine so ultimately it's more about the power input and power input as you know power again equals to e over t so if you are just talking about per second then it's the same as the ratio of energy input on the second day over the energy input of the first day. Okay, so this is a logical deduction. Uh, we didn't move much about the, the mathematics, but then these steps are actually quite important. If you um, don't know how to do properly, you don't understand the relationship between them. And the rest will simply be very simple. For calculating energy, which will be the kinetic energy. So that will be half M2. I'll try to separate them first. So half MV square, but that is the second day. So two for M, two for V, and same for the first day. So MV square, half MV square as well, but then this is the first day mass and the first day's velocity. And again, you should find out the half will got cancel out. And then you just have to work on the rest. And I believe you actually have everything else. So uh, you can either input and substitute the value like M2 is going to be 3750 and M1 is going to be 7500. Or if you just uh, recall what they have told you is reduced by half, right? So it's actually one over two for M2 and M1. And for the velocity, you can either do 6 and 12, and don't forget to square them, or do a bracket square. Or if you like, even simply, you can do half and then square, because you know the speed is reduced by half. So the second day is only half of the first day. So eventually, you get the fraction to be 1 over 8, and that will be the answer. And yeah, it's a bit challenging. I do believe these 
question actually should deserve four marks in total instead. Here's the last question. Again, if you haven't done it, pause the video and try it yourself. It's a cable car system and you can see the cable car just like the previous question uh, earlier in the last video uh, the package got sent uh, upward so uh, we've got a motor as well and there's like a pulley to moving them up and then we have a few information so first of all the diagram tells you the dimension so six meter along the track and the height is vertical height is two meter the height i will put it as h and then here we've got the mass of the cable car and then the time okay and the answer the average speed so obviously it takes uh when you talk about speed so it's not about how much you move like in like from one point to another like just simply the path that you move so so simply that six meter so what you do is uh you can say the speed would equal to six meter or just simply 6 divided by 40 and so sorry I have to use calculator so that will be 0 0.15 meter per second very slow and that is because it's actually a model cable car so it actually makes sense it's not a real cable car system next it asks you the GPD gain by the cable car so very very simple and if you see this you should be very happy because just recall equation mgh and then the mass is 5 g is 10 and h is the vertical height remember so it's just not 6 but 2 only okay so that will be 100 joule part 3 asks you about the useful power output and that means the gpd simply uh, because if you are thinking about hey what about kd then you can see that it set it stop automatically at the top so that means KD is not the most important thing and that is not the useful power because when you take the cable car is the most useful part is you move up right you're not moving with a certain speed that that is not really relevant so uh, the only useful power or energy is a GPD only so what you can do is uh, simply finding out the useful energy which is gpe so let's say power equals to energy over time and energy would simply be the gpe which is calculated by mgh basically what we did earlier divided by the time which is i forget again so 40 and so energy in fact is something that you can copy from the previous so that would be 100 so 100 divide 40 wait that is simply 2.5 watts Here comes a new challenger. here's a bonus question for you in the past when my students are doing this some of them use another approach and i want you to tell me what's wrong with that so what they do is they use another equation for power so they use p equals to f times v and then they find out okay f is probably the weight and so uh, that is mg and so for the mass which is uh, what we have got from the question uh, 5 kg okay and then g is 10 and then v is the one that uh, we have find 0 0.15 meter per second so eventually if you try to use your calculator and you will find the answer to be 7.5 w watt instead so why is there a difference between our answer 2.5 and 7.5 i want you to think about it obviously the one that we did this one my hint is this one is correct while this one is wrong so i want you to think about why is this one wrong Okay, let me explain it in case you still want to guess then you can pause the video and continue to guess if not I'm going to tell you so 
The reason why this one is wrong, 7.5 watt is wrong, is because the equation P equals to F times V has an assumption you need to fulfill. If you remember uh, at the very beginning when we learned this equation, all right, you can go and flip back to the very early, we talk about it. All right, there's an assumption behind. Oops, I go over. Here. And that is the force has to be parallel to the velocity that you are moving. Because this is from the work done equation. And work done equation uh, would need the force and the direction of movement of the displacement to be in the same direction. If not, then you have to take cosine theta. And that is the same in this part. When you try to apply this equation, the force and the velocity is not exactly the same because when you substitute 5 and 10, that means 50, that is the weight. The velocity, 0 0.15, is not in the same direction. Let me show you. Think about the car here, then you will have the weight going this direction, which is 50 Newton. And then the velocity is going in this direction instead. So obviously you can see they are not parallel. And that is why you get the wrong answer. However, this doesn't mean that the equation F times V equals to power is useless. You can still apply it, but then you have to make adjustment on them. And that is to say, if I can redo this here, then we can do P equals to F times V with the cosine theta. Okay, and so in this case, it will still be 50 times the V, which is 0 0.15. And then for the angle, it will be the angle between them. And so if you look at the diagram earlier, it was something like, it was something like this, basically, right? This is two, this is six. And so the angle that we are talking about is when you have the V going in this direction and then the weight going in this direction. So that will be, let me think. If you want them to be the same, then you can probably get this angle. So you can kind of take the cosine of this one so that they will become parallel. W cosine theta will become the same direction as V. And so this angle is going to be the same as this angle. So 2 over 6, basically, is a fraction that you're looking at. And so eventually, if you remember, this one is 7.5 from the wrong answer. Then if you multiply with 2 over 6, that means divide by 3, then that is 2.5, which is the same correct answer. But of course, I think we all know that if you try to do it this way, uh, it would just be more mathematically challenging and more confusing for you. So that is why you have to be very careful with assumption and maybe also think about which way will be easier for you to obtain the answer. And usually if you try to stick with the fundamental definition, because this one, P equals to energy over time is the fundamental definition, then uh, very likely it will get you the answers directly. Okay, lastly, the question asks you how would the electrical power input to the motor compared to our answer so remember our answer is calculating useful power output right the useful one only and then they are talking about the electrical power input then obviously the input must be greater because you need to give more and you know some of them will be dissipated as heat for the sound energy as well and eventually only part of it that is 2.5 watts will become the useful power output